Really, privacy didn't exist for millennia. We lived in small clans, in caves, and if somebody did something in the other part of the cave, you got to see them. And we went from caves to small villages where people lived with 20 or 30 people and everybody knew everybody's business. And then eventually, during the Industrial Revolution, people went and lived in cities, and that's actually when anonymity began to develop. And that lasted pretty much up until the internet age. As you fast forward, what you see is the social effect of being able to communicate in this computer-mediated way. But we're starting to see some other, let me say, unsettling things. There's an infrastructure in place in the United States and worldwide that NSA has built in cooperation with other governments as well that intercepts the vast majority of human device-based communications. What this court order does that makes it so striking, it's collecting the phone records of every single customer of Verizon Business. It's a government program designed to collect information about all Americans, not just people where they believe there's reason to think they've done anything wrong. We have a system of pervasive pre-criminal surveillance where the government wants to watch what you're doing just to see what you're up to, even behind closed doors. The reality of working in an intelligence community is that you see things that are deeply troubling. Privacy is deeply under assault. Technologically, it becomes feasible to track you in more ways than anybody could imagine. Every time you click like on Facebook, there are computer algorithms that can figure things out about you based upon what you like. So if you like certain musicals, they can say you're more likely to be gay, and they've actually run studies on that at MIT. So we're all leaking data and we're being segmented by large data companies that store this data, often very insecurely, with very little regulation, and we don't know how that will play out in the future. There's this whole dynamic in which privacy is rapidly eroded, but we don't have a good set of social conventions that tell us what we should be doing with this kind of technology and how we should be treating each other. How do we evolve appropriate social conventions for the environment that we are not only living in, but creating? Privacy is very much a fundamental human right, and I think we should be doing much more to protect it. If we don't act to establish international standards that are widely respected and enforced by strong technology, we may not be able to get privacy back. But today we can. All we need to do is advocate for reform. I've heard people say, if you've got nothing to hide, then you wouldn't try to assert privacy. And my response to that is, if you've got nothing to hide, then you've got nothing to live for.